ladies and gentlemen, I am so pleased to see you all again, even though I cannot actually see you, of course. That was a joke. I make it sometimes, and it's funny, damn it. Laugh. This week, we'll be taking a look at Poker Night at the Inventory, which is a game developed and distributed by Telltale Games, came out in November of 2010, and it's basically a simple poker game held in an underground hidden club with four other well-known characters from the gaming industry. So, Telltale came up with this idea after thinking about what game characters do when they're not on duty, so when they're not in their game trying to shoot other people or run from platform to platform, and they sort of thought of this underground illegal poker club called the Inventory where all those characters would meet and play a Texas Hold'em style poker game. Uh, they pitched this idea to other companies and they were allowed to borrow certain other characters from the gaming scene. Uh, and those characters are Sam from Sam at Max, Strongbat from Homestar Runner, Tycho from the internet comic Penny Arcade, and The Heavy from Team Fortress 2. Now, these guys are all voiced by their original voice actors, and according to Telltale's graphic designer Jake Rodkin, they actually wrote more lines of dialogue for this game than they do for an average Sam at Max adventure episode, so naturally, there is going to be a heavy focus on conversation and banter between the characters, and apparently it also includes hidden tells in the characters' faces and behavior that uh, they can tell you when they are bluffing or not, but... I have never been able to pick up on that, probably because I am the world's most horrible poker player. Now, look, for some people there is an option to decrease the amount of banter, but I've set it to high because I like some interaction between the players at the table, and the conversations and remarks are actually pretty funny most of the time. Of course, if you play this game a lot, it's going to get a bit repetitive, but it will be a while before that happens. Now. Having said that, let's take a look at what we're actually talking about here. I'm going to press the play game button. It'll load for a while and then you see our character entering an elevator because like I said before, the inventory is sort of a secretive illegal club that housed a few floors underneath this big warehouse. Now when we do finally get down there, we will be greeted by a lovely, lovely gentleman who some of you will recognize as Reginald von Winslow, who is of course a prime character in the latest release of the Monkey Island series. I believe he was a captain of, of some sort of ship, something, uh, I believe it was the Screaming Narwhal, but I'm not sure, I haven't actually finished that game yet. I do plan to, but it's been busy, you know. There he is. Hello there. I'm going to let him talk for a while and he'll tell you all about How good it the is game. to see a fresh face here at the inventory. I imagine you're here for the card game with the fellows downstairs. Let me lead you down there. A first timer, hmm? I'm a bit more familiar with the uh, benefactions of the club. The club was founded in 1919 in response to an early draft of the 18th Amendment. Through back channels, it was learned that this vile piece of legislation would not only outlaw libations, but games and amusements that could also threaten the world-renowned determination and productivity of the American workforce. Ha! Ah, can you imagine? Games outlawed! Nevertheless, this club has been here in secret ever since, just in case those in charge get another bee in their bonnet. Mm. So welcome, and enjoy yourself. Ah, your table. Ahem, gentlemen. I hope there is room at the table for a fifth. Ha! <laughs> fresh meat! Tonight stakes will be ten thousand dollars. Oh, All just right. because you're a manager, up to the table, you get to you make the rules. See manager. The four main characters here. <laughs> no, I am not under the employ of the inventory. I just see to it that everybody has a good time. That will be ten thousand. I hope each of you brought your billfolds. There, we toss the money onto the table. Everybody does so. The die has been cast. The game will be no limit Texas Hold'em. Like I said, I will Texas No Limits Hold'em. The the Good. 
and we're actually off. Now, I'm not going to try and actually explain the game of poker to you because I don't think I'm that good at it. Uh, I can tell you some of the basics, of course. You've got two cards dealt to you at the beginning of each game and you need those two cards to make the best combination you can with the cards that are going to be right on the table here. Now, of course, I don't really know what this means. I have a four and a six. Um, I'm just going to call that, which basically means that I'm going to play this round and just see what happens. Oh, take so much time. I will take quick disco nap and wake ready for blood. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna fold. I'll call. Oh, oh strong bad is also in. The heavy is in. So this is actually the first turn of cards. And we see an 8, a 7, and a 2. I have a 4 and a 6. So I can't really work with that. I'll check. I check this. Everybody's checking. I think, well, this is basically what they call a free check, so I don't have to put in any money now. And that is basically all I know about Perfect. poker. That was the extent of my knowledge. Nice. Which is... Which, which is maybe the reason that I've lost so much money over the course of playing this game. Um, you know what? There's a 5 there, so I can now make 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which is one row of cards. I'm not sure whether it's called, but I know it's good, so I'm going to bet... Uh, let's bet carefully. 1,500. Or should I raise. Say, yes, raise by 1,500. Yeah, come on then. No, nope, strong man is out. Ah, I am all in. Ah, oh, the heavy goes all in. That means he's basically betting all of his chips. Um, fight me. You know what? It is not advisable. Yes, I, I'm sure it's not advisable, but I'm going to do it anyway. Show me the cards. He's got a queen and a five. And the last card is a king. The player has a straight. That's called a straight. I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. There's no quicker way to turn the hotties off than by being a terrible poker player, man. The player wins the hand. Yes, and I've actually won this hand, which is quite a bit of chips. I've never actually had a hand go this well for me, outside from being extremely lucky, but I guess this was an extremely lucky hand then. And right at the first moment, We've actually played the heavy away from the table because he's lost all of his chips. Now, occasionally you do see characters coming at the table and they don't have the money to front their buy-in, so they'll use different items to buy themselves in. I know that Max can use his badge and his gun as buy-in for the game. Strongbad, I believe, has some sort of glasses and the heavy has his prized minigun Natasha. And if they actually front, if, if they actually buy themselves into the game with one of those items, and you play them out of the game, you can actually win those items to use on your characters in Team Fortress 2, which is pretty nice. I don't think I play enough Team Fortress 2 to actually use those items, but I think that's a nice crossover. Although I would have liked it if there were more, I believe there's four or five items in there that you can use. I would have liked it if they'd done a little more effort to... I don't know, to, to, to link those two games together. They could have made, well, they could have made themselves quite more known that way. So I'm going to click away at the screen here and we'll play one more round. See if we're still as lucky. We have a 7 and a 2. I stole the Strong Bad School game for attractive people's source code from those telltale chops. As you can see, they're talking amongst themselves quite a bit. Ooh, that sounds criminal. It's like sitting at a table with good friends, only these are all imaginary friends. Which is what I do anyway. Well, this is crap. We have a 7 and a 2, and there's nothing on the table that we can use. I'm still going to check, because it's free. This is a harder decision than that time Strong, Sad, and Homestar asked me for dessert, and I only had one laxative brownie left. That does get in the way a little, that if you have your conversation and the amount of banter set too high, then sometimes the conversations do get in the way of playing the game, so when you do decide to play this game a lot, or if you try and learn 
the game of poker by playing this game a lot, which you can actually do because there's rules in this game as well that you can read and, and look up. Uh, then sometimes that gets in the way and it it slows the game down a bit. I don't think that's a, that uh, that's a bad point because this game is not about hardcore poker. This game is more about having a relaxed evening with with some guys, and the guys are imaginary. But that's not a big deal. I'm going to check this. I'll call you. The player has King High. Max has a pair of jacks. Ah, he's Max actually got higher than me. Hand. So he wins the hand now. We are. How much did we lose? Yeah, we lost quite a lot of that. So there we go. Poker Knight at the inventory. Uh, I think Telltale did a good job you know, at uh, creating a nice poker game with a friendly atmosphere and I'm sure going to be playing this on and off for a couple of nights maybe with a with a drink and a cigar in my head I don't know I'm sure as hell going to be enjoying this and you'll be seeing more of this thank you for watching this episode of GIMP be sure to check out the next episode next weekend I'll have it up by then um, I'll see you guys later bye bye maybe your legs just to see what it feels like. Just want to get up there and sway in the wind. No? Is that not... Okay. <laughs>